When I reviewed the Nest Audio here, I actually made a statement inside of that review that said, hey, you know what, this is replacing the original Google Home, which wasn't even retired at the time, and the Google Home Max, and people kind of lost their mind with that one, and I know uh, that I couldn't say a lot about that, and that might have frustrated some of you. So I apologize if I frustrated you, but really what I was saying was that I kind of within a couple of these sessions with Google heard the end of the Google Home Max. From a pricing perspective, this was meant to replace it, and from capabilities, they had a pipeline going forward. So on top of some other things I had heard, I put that out there in the review. Now, the Google Home Max has actually been discontinued at this point, and we're seeing a lot of changes from the hardware perspective from Google, and there's reason for that, but I'm gonna go into the full details towards the end of this video. So if you wanna understand what's going on hardware-wise with Google, stick around. One good piece of news about the Google Home Max there is that support is not being dropped. And just like the Google Home Mini, the Google Home Original, and now the Google Home Max, although that whole platform seems to be kind of going by the wayside, the support for those devices is remaining intact. Come January 2021, we're gonna be looking at the end of a pandemic, as well as the end of the Works With Nest issue that we've all had for pretty much all of 2020. That is because Google and Samsung have partnered to bring Nest devices into SmartThings. I wanna start with this Google and Samsung integration because it means great things for those of you with a Nest thermostat, a Nest camera, or a Nest Hello doorbell. What you're not hearing is the Nest Protect, the Nest Secure alarm system, or the Nest speakers themselves. And this one is still a bit unclear to me what we're going to be able to do with the Nest speakers if anything in terms of this integration but I know right now the Nest Protect and the Nest Secure system are not going to come along with this ride it's basically a different API that's being used for those two products versus the cameras and the thermostats there so unfortunately we're not going to get those triggers into Samsung smart things but those other products you're gonna get a lot of capability out of there's one other component to that integration between Samsung and Google Google too, their 2020 TVs that you see on screen right now, those actually have the ability to have the Google Assistant directly on them. So you have voice control, plus you have the integration of these two systems coming together. Now you're not hearing me talk about Samsung being able to trigger events on the Nest speakers or your Google Home system in general, and that's because that isn't part of this announcement, and I wouldn't expect that tomorrow, but we have seen a bit of movement here in terms of triggers inside of the Google Home application and in terms of routines. What you will see now when you go into the routine section is the brand new sunset and sunrise triggers. Google actually made a promise to me and they made a promise to you as well to have triggers available inside of the Google Home application. Now we all know how good Google is at making deadlines because they actually said it would be there by the end of the year and we're starting to see that movement but we haven't seen the big release where we get all these sensors and different things that can come into the app. That I'm not sure is gonna be here before the end of the year, but what I am seeing is this redesign is making room for that. Plus, it's a bit of an easier uh, interface to be using here as you walk through creation of routines and management of routines. Also, in case you haven't noticed, when you're editing a routine or you go into the details for a routine, there's a button on Android that allows you to add the whole routine to your home screen. Now that means it's a one tap execution of routines from your smartphone. I think one of the most common things I hear about the Nest cameras is that when they're out in a garage and they're kind of out of the good range of Wi-Fi, they tend to struggle. And this is probably one of the situations that many of you will end up dealing with if you have any camera, really. But what's nice is Google's actually created a couple of troubleshooters. Now, I haven't seen this integrated into an application or anything specific just yet, although it does have the flavor of the Nest application. But there's two links down below for troubleshooters that will help you if you're getting error codes or you're getting 
transmitting different messages from your Nest camera or your Nest thermostat. One of the biggest requests that I've had since I started this channel is how do I send a text message from my Google Home device? And actually this has been hanging out there a little while and only a few people know about this. Now a while ago I showed you how you could create a delay in routines through Mr. Home and their Google Assistant skill. Well there's actually a new skill from the same developer that allows you to send text messages. Now this will take an app, there's a small cost after after you've sent three test uh, text messages but it works great and I've been enjoying it since I installed it sadly one of our most popular videos on the channel to this day is Apple Music and Google Assistant integration and that's because quite frankly it was hard or it didn't work right and in some countries it was working and it was just a disaster of a situation. Well, that is finally remedied here in a number of countries. Now, if your country's not on the list, just like poor old me, well, you can't call up Apple Music or create the integration in the Google Home application. But I did some testing because again, I'm a little weird. And that testing, well, you know what? I have an Android phone and I thought, well, it doesn't seem to work with the HomePods. Maybe Apple Music has a reason other than Bluetooth. Well, they do. And there's a little cast button now inside of that application that allows you to cast to all of your speakers and your speaker group. So it is actually reading that for me here in Canada. And I got all the interface changes. I had the logos for Apple Music. Everything was there. I just can't use my voice to bring up the first song. Sometimes on Patreon, I actually get on video calls with some of the patrons over there. It's my way to thank them and it also generally helps them out with some kind of major issue. Now I usually do that on smart displays because it's a great mic and video interface and I can always use Google Meet and Google Duo which I like but not everyone does and a lot of people are using Zoom right now and if you are one of those people you're going to be pretty excited to go into the video and calls section here of the application and be able to integrate Zoom and start using the whole Zoom service with your smart displays. Once you've set that up, you can start a Zoom meeting on the fly and then actually you'll choose the account that you've connected and you're able to get a Zoom meeting ID on the Google Assistant on your phone and then share that out. Then people can join and you have a full interface to use. The other thing you can do is if you have this scheduled in your Google Calendar, well, then you can just join the meeting through the join command and have the same experience. I know for many of you, you have Dyson products in your home and while I'm a little bit jealous of how much money you can spend on an air purifier or a fan, I also was always able to laugh at you a little bit because I could make my fan work. But now you can too, so I can't make fun of you anymore. Definitely my favorite streaming device right now is the Chromecast with Google TV. This device has been excellent in my home. You've seen the hidden tips and tricks videos that I created. I've been playing Stadia on it with a PlayStation controller. I, I, the things I can do with it are incredible at that $50, $60 price point here in Canada. So I've absolutely loved it, but the interface at the top felt a little bit clunky and Google's actually making a change right now. If it's not already on your device, it's coming soon. You're gonna see those words across the top turn into smaller icons and kind of move over to the side. And one of the problems there is that the recommendations that Google is giving me, they're not quite good enough. They don't have enough data. And I don't want to sit there and go into every different show and tune my recommendations that way. Well, there's actually a quicker way coming here that will allow you to go through a lot of shows and tune your recommendations very quickly. And speaking of recommendations, well, you're going to need those recommendations for a couple of new services. Now, this was actually the thing that I said was the biggest knock against the Chromecast when I got it and I reviewed it, and that was the fact that Apple TV wasn't there, but Google announced that in 2021, you're going to have the option of bringing Apple TV to the Chromecast, which is just crazy to say at this point. But NBC Peacock also has a service, and of course, everyone's got to have a service today. And I think the big show there is The Office is moving off of Netflix in the US, but <laughs> here in Canada, I'm pretty sure we get to keep it. Anyways, 
the NBC Peacock service there, that's also coming to the Chromecast. If you haven't noticed already, well, it's pretty close to Christmas, and if you're not ready, well, I've got a little way to make things better, and this is only for your kids, unless maybe your significant other really likes Santa Claus. I don't know, go for it. But I show this every year on the channel, and I usually do a kid's Christmas video, but this year it's just not going to fit in the schedule and so I want to tell you here that the Santa video call is a really great thing for young kids. It's a lot of fun especially on the smart displays. They get a little interface, they get to see a few things and they can tap on screen to make adjustments. So that's a great one. Unfortunately it didn't work on that Chromecast I was just talking about. If you didn't know already, well Automate Your Life actually has a whole tutorials channel that we create these little tutorials for you to get just a little bit more out of your smart home products now the whole idea of those is that they're quick and you're just gonna be able to do the new thing that we're gonna show you over there and one of those new things is a tutorial video that Alan created for us and that's around a new capability for wired headphones as strange as this sounds wired headphones now that can connect into your phone can actually bring up notifications and if you have the right configuration you can do a number of things so you can actually speak through them if you have google or nest wi-fi you can now prioritize two different things and i showed you last week stadia gaming but the new one that's been added there is that video conferencing capability so you can prioritize your network for either of those two things or both of them and speaking of stadia actually i've been playing a lot and i put a link down below for a free month for you now i happen to get another free month but there's a limit on how many i can get so you can get a free month of stadia to try out pro then you'll be able to claim a bunch of games go play for free and you can add me as a friend as well so we can play some games together now stadia the reason i'm talking about that there's a big movement here guys and you know what when we all first saw stadia i'm not sure everyone was buying in but from what I've seen in terms of Google Assistant integration being there in the application on that controller already, plus the ability to play with these different controllers. And just yesterday, I actually played on my Pixel out of my home, I was not even in my home, with an Xbox controller connected to that. So I'm playing Elder Scrolls Online somehow in the middle of nowhere with an Xbox controller and a phone. So some incredible things are happening and today if you go to stadia.google.com on a safari browser on an ios device you can sign in you'll need to make sure cookies are on and then you'll be able to pair a controller and start to play stadia on your ios device and if you ask your google assistant to play a game well then you're going to bring up this new lobby or this new game hub and i think this is where we're driving from stadia into the google assistant but today there's just been a bunch of new games added to this so you can try all of these out all of this boils down to you being able to ask how much sleep you got last night but it all comes from a new section in the application and this has been interesting for me to watch because Google hasn't even been able to buy Fitbit just yet but Fitbit is the first one if you go into this new wellness section and the new sleep section within there you can actually integrate your Fitbit device in once you do that, then you'll have that option to ask about how well you slept the previous night. And with the introduction of things like the wellness and other features that we've been getting here, you know what, the Google Assistant and Google Home Settings page here, it's getting huge. The good news is Google's been thinking about this for a while. This is what they do on their Pixel or their Android phones. You can search the settings and when you do that, you can go find that wellness section very quickly. When you're looking at your Google Assistant enabled display, you might find a number of cards that show up now. And these are actually part of a new settings feature that we have in the Google Home app. And that is this snapshot section. Now you can customize what is available to show up here. And this will allow you to make sure those cards are the right things for you and your family. 
This is one of the most useful new features, and if you have multiple Google accounts, you can now integrate them just for yourself. This isn't like multi-user, but this allows you to integrate multiple calendars and multiple Google Meet schedules, and you saw me use that in the Zoom section here earlier in the video, so this is very useful. I apparently don't have enough USB-C cables and apparently am very lazy. Now, the good news is Google's there to help me through this situation. So it was just the other night, I'm in bed and I've moved a USB-C cable and I can't charge my Pixel 4 XL, which let's be honest, if you were at 10% with one of those, definitely the next morning that phone is dead, your alarm is not working. But a new feature drop has actually given us an extreme battery saver option that actually kept me at around 4% or 4% loss here through the entire night. Now that's incredible, it still woke me up and I'm happy. Shown on screen is a chart that Google put out for their latest feature drops and probably the biggest new feature is hold for me. Now this is only available in the US and you can set it up by going into the phone application that you actually use, go into the settings there and you'll see an option for hold for me if it's available for your phone. There's also a new adaptive sound capability available for the 4A and the 5 only which will identify the sound characteristics of your room and improve the speaker and lots of people are already talking about how much better that is. You're also going to see new home screen customization and new wallpapers as well as a few other features. Screen sharing for Google Duo group calls is now available on the Pixel as well and actually something that's contrary to a lot of these fast chargers that we see is adaptive charging and this is a really interesting move by Google and I think it says something about the batteries on your phones. They will basically Basically, if you set an alarm, they'll adaptively charge your phone to just be at 100% when you wake up. So it's going to kind of slow charge through the evening. We've seen a couple of leaked photos come out about a Pixel 5 Pro and a Pixel XE phone. And honestly, I don't know whether those are real products, but this is where I'm going to kind of move into talking about some of the new hardware and some of the reason behind me talking about this is actually coming from a phone call that Google had with investors. And what was said there is that Google has been for about three years now investing deeply in hardware. And as they have done that, they have been able to just slowly roll out things. But 2021 is expected to be a huge year for Google in terms of their growth in hardware. And I think we can start with a conversation around the Pixel phones. And while I'll have a larger video prepared for you guys here in the new year about what I expect out of Google in 2021, the first thing around those Pixel phones, you know what, I have to point at the cameras. And listen, the Pixel 4 I've had, the Pixel 4a I've had, they take amazing photos, but they don't take amazing video and they are not keeping up with their competitors. And I think they have learned quite a bit from Samsung and Apple that you have to pair some pretty serious hardware with great software. And we all know Google's great at software, but they have to be paired with great hardware. And that's not something that they really upgraded from the four all the way to the new five here. So I would expect the Pixel 6 and really any new pro level device, if we happen to get one of those in 2021 here, I'm expecting a pretty big increase on the camera. Now, I'm also wondering if they've been doing some work in terms of chips. And I don't think Google's quite ready to take that big leap, but they do have some experience with solely in creating chip hardware. So they could be working on that side too to create a different processor for this new lineup of phones. And speaking of solely, I actually expect to see that on more devices and they're going to use this in different ways like they did with the Nest thermostat to kind of tell whether you're in the home. Now that's the new Nest thermostat and the whole Nest system, I'm expecting updates and upgrades to all of their existing devices. I don't think there's a Nest device that won't get an update 
other than the speakers, which clearly already have. We've talked about the Google Home Max. I think we'll see a new version of that, but we have the new Nest Audio. We have the Nest Mini. We have a Nest Hub, which should get a little processor improvement and come back out. The Nest Hub Max should stay, but when we're talking about the cameras and the thermostats, those have to be redone. And I would also expect alongside the chip standard coming out its first iteration here in 2021 later in the year we start to see some sensors directly from google nest themselves they've been ready for years with nest thread devices but haven't released them so it's been kind of annoying to watch that or see that take so long but i think we're seeing the culmination now and that's maybe another reason that the nest secure died now i talked about one of those tutorial videos within here but i created a whole play playlist for you to get more out of your Google Nest devices. That's up on screen right now. You can go watch that and make sure you're doing all of these new things that I gave you access to today, plus some other things that maybe you missed. Thanks for watching everyone. And of course, don't hate, automate.